a blog really uh, it's is an asset that will increase the income of your business if done the right way. The Mumpreneurs Podcast. Interviews and tips for mums who want to have their own successful family-friendly business. With your host, Anne Boner. Hi guys, and welcome to episode number nine of the Mumpreneurs Podcast. And my guest today is Ricky Figueroa. He's a blogging expert and he's a founder of bloglaunchinsider.com. Ricky helps beginners, entrepreneurs, and network marketers launch profitable blogs, products, or businesses online the smart way. He donates 50% of his blog's profits to help children in need. If you're a blogger, if you're a mummy blogger, if you haven't started a blog and you're thinking of starting one, then this is the interview that you need to listen to. He doesn't just cover blogging, he covers all the aspects of being an entrepreneur. So hello everyone and welcome to episode number nine of the Mumpreneurs podcast and my guest today is the fantastic Ricky Figueroa and he's a blogging expert and I'm so happy to have him on because he is doing amazing things, he really knows his stuff. So hello Ricky. Hello there. How are you? I'm doing great, doing great. Uh, Going through a lot of great stuff that is going on right now so I'm very excited about the things that I'm going to share today over here. Brilliant, me too, definitely. So can you tell us more about you? Because we want our audience to know who you are, where you're from, what you do. Absolutely. Um, basically, uh, my name is Ricky Figueroa, like um, you just said uh, a moment ago. I'm 32 years old, very stubborn individual. <laughs> individual uh, when, it, when it comes to my own ideas and the things that, that truly passionate me the most, I was born in uh, North Carolina but raised in Puerto Rico, so I do have an accent uh, by the standards of most people. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit more about my background. Basically, I, I it's funny because I, I my background is in entertainment business, direct sales, media, and music. So I, I was into singer singing and songwriting for a long time before I got into building businesses online. But I always have this need to create stuff from my heart, so I always translate that to all my businesses my businesses, and, and, and working with clients right now. Okay, very interesting. So what originally motivated you to become an entrepreneur? Wow, that is a great question. I, I actually started when I was in high school. Uh, I started like many people did. I started with eBay. Ah. <laughs> Honestly, one of the things that really motivated me is that I knew in my heart that I was not a good employee. <laughs> That's to be honest. I never, I was never able to be in one job for more than three months. And so I, I jumped from job to job because I got easily bored, right? And I felt that I was like in a box, in a little box that didn't allow me to create and, and, and do amazing things, right? Help people and, and, and create stuff from, from my mind and just materialize that, right? One of the things that really motivated me is that as an entrepreneur, we we do have the opportunity to take an idea, right? Put it to life, give it life, right? To, to that idea and, and serve a lot of people. As an entrepreneur, we, don't, we are not limited by the standards of, of society, right? We are more, uh, we have the freedom, right? To, to create amazing things. And the only way that, uh, the only limitation that we may have is uh, the limitations that we put on ourselves. Honestly, I always had that little bug inside of me of basically being an entrepreneur. Uh, I remember reading my first book for entrepreneurs, which was Rich Dad, Poor Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And that book changed everything for me. Since then, I have been in in my entrepreneurial journey um, doing a lot of different stuff, right? And I will say that that book was the one that inspired me to really become an entrepreneur and do more than than just work on a regular job that I, I didn't enjoy, that, that, that didn't allow me to do something bigger than myself, right? So I believe that book was the catalyst of, of that kind of mindset that changed everything for me. Yeah, I think everyone knows that book, don't they? And that was yeah. the starting point for a lot of people. And really, for me as well, I think I read that when I was like 19, so, yeah, I definitely agree. <laughs> it's a great book. I mean, it just it changed my mindset. It was crazy because what happens is when you get access to that kind of information and then you find yourself surrounded with a lot of people, everyone else don't think that way. So um, you can notice the change within you, but also you can see 
how many people are not living to their full potential, right? And um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's very interesting. So you started off, as you mentioned before, in the music industry. You got into business. So how did this escalate to the point where you got into blogging and became an expert in blogging? Could you just take us through the journey and how you ended up at that place? Yeah, um, that is that is quite a story. Not too long ago, actually, uh, about I think it was in 2011, I, w I found myself in a very, a very difficult situation. I was completely broke financially. I only had three dollars and fifty cents in my bank account. Um, I was sleeping on a friend's couch. I was in complete debt, emotionally broken, and I mean, it was it was the one of the most difficult times of my life. Basically, I, I remember it was December. 31st of 2011. That is a day, right, that everyone is basically celebrating and, and waiting to welcome the new year. Mm -hmm. I, I was, I remember I was alone in this place, in my friend's place. He was working overnight, so he wasn't there, so I was completely alone. And I, I'm going to get a little bit uh, deep in here because that's exactly what, what happened. I found myself in such a deep emotional emotional roller coaster right yeah. that day that uh, I had for the first time in my life and the only time in my life to be honest I had this little voice in my mind that was telling me that I was not good enough that I was a loser right that that um, everything I tried I, I failed that um, I was not valuable enough to keep living that I should end my pain by um, basically taking my life right I decided to call my father at that time. I remember uh, uh, they, my entire family was in Puerto Rico, and I called him to apologize uh, for not being able to be there because I didn't have the money to to get there, right? Celebrating with them and, and, and all that good stuff. And I told, But I told him, I shared with him the kind of thoughts that I was having in my mind. I told him, you know, uh, you know, I've never been into drugs, I've never been into alcohol, thank God, but I have this little thing in my mind, this little voice that's telling me all this stuff. The problem wasn't what that little voice was telling me, the problem was that I was believing it, right? And he told me something so simple, um, because my father is not the kind of person who sits down with you and give you advice, I always had to figure things out on my own, you know, but um, he, he gave me this little advice or basically little comments, if you will, mm -hmm. because my grandmother was the one who raised me. She was my mom and my father at the same time, and, and she passed away two years before, right? So I got a little bit lost in, in, in between that, right? Yeah. So he told me something about her, right, uh, and the way she raised me. It was enough, right, to change and shift my mindset at that very moment, which honestly just saved my life. It just bought me some time, right? It changed my mind and, and the way that I was feeling, right? Uh, I felt kind of, I don't know how to explain it. It was, it was like this fire within me just started. I decided that I was, after that call, I decided that I was going to change absolutely everything. I said, I'm going to change my life around. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it, but today I know why I have to do it, right? That was enough for me to make a committed decision. Something that I want to, to say about that is that a, a committed decision is only a decision if it's followed by the, a series of action steps that support that decision, right? Otherwise, it will be just wishful thinking. You know, we in life, we don't get really what we want. We get what we focus on. So I was focusing on, on that why, on that purpose, of that, and that, that fire and that passion that just started that night. I put out there in the universe. I, I believe in that because it just changed everything for me. Put the intention out there. I say, I don't know how this is going to happen. And this is when most people actually get lost. They don't know how, so it just stop. They stop themselves because they don't know how they're going to do something. Instead of focusing on the how, I actually focused on the why, and I just put the intention out there that I was going to change everything. I was tired of being broke. I was tired of being uh, having my, my confidence at, a, at an all-time low. I was tired of, of living in mediocrity, right, and failing so much, right? It, funny enough, the next day, somehow, I actually came across this uh, lady on Facebook that introduced me to the power of blogging and, and the power of, of, of how to use blogging to make great income. But yeah, I needed to leverage a, the products of another company, right? And uh, because I didn't have any products to, to be able to make money through blogging at that time. 
So the problem was that I didn't have the money to join this company and, and leverage their platform, right? So I only had $3.50, a few pieces of bread and, and some water. That's all I had at that moment. But what I did was I was so fired up. I basically discovered how I was going to do it, what, what vehicle I was going to use. And then what I did was, because I didn't have the money, I started basically putting, uh, writing down all my thoughts and brainstorming kind of an outline of, of, of my vision and how I was going to just make it happen uh, within 90 days, right? right? Because I was desperate. I needed to make something happen. What happened was that I started sharing my vision. I, did, I wasn't asking for help, but I was starting, uh, I shared my vision and my, my enthusiasm for, for it um, with uh, family members and friends. Mm -hmm. It just happened that one of my friends actually said, Ricky, I'm going to help you. Uh, so you can get started, you know. We had a, an amazing conversation. He actually lent me about $1,500. I didn't need that much, but I needed to own some of the products from that company so I could resell them and make commissions. He helped me with that. Long story uh, short, basically my goal was to make $10,000 in, in within 90 days, but I actually made way more. I actually made three times uh, more than that, right? It was, uh, I made about $36,000 in my first 90 days wow. with blogging. And I didn't know much. I made tons and tons of mistakes, but I was leveraging a, 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 um, a process and I was, in, to be honest, I worked extremely hard for those 90 days, but it changed absolutely everything. You know, I was able to pay back my friend. He was ac actually interested in, in investing more money to help me out. Uh, so he can get now a return of investment on the second investment, right? <laughs> so we did some kind of a deal and stuff like that. And I was able to get my life back together. I was able to to pay my bills, to, to get uh, my rent on time, right? And I was able to buy groceries, <laughs> you know, and, and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's um, very, very interesting when you go through that kind of challenges. Yeah. How me looking back right now and, and just um, knowing where I'm at right now, and it wasn't too long ago, it was in 2011, you know, how I changed everything, you know, with a, a, a very committed decision, you know. That's how I went into blogging. It was kind of, I, I, I wouldn't say luck because uh, I, I believe I created the opportunity. That's what I love about entrepreneurship. And as human beings, we have the power to create our own opportunities. We cannot really just expect things to happen, right, to us. It, that's, that's basically the long story short on, on how I actually went into blogging and how it changed everything for me, right? And it was the foundation for everything else that I'm doing right now. Right now I'm not uh, affiliated with that company because I decided to create my own company and, and serve uh, a, a bigger industry, right? Um, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> wow, I never knew that about you. That's, a, that's an amazing story. And Thank it goes you. to show the power of intent, you know. Yes. And I believe that you knew, even though you didn't have the money in your account, you didn't have the food, etc., you knew within yourself that it had already happened. It is the power, I believe, it's the power of making a bet mm. on, on your ability to make things happen, even if you don't know how it's going to happen. Yeah. But you know within yourself that you do have the ability to figure things out in the process. Most people want to figure things out before, and they always get stuck in the before. And they never get started, they never follow through, and they never really just um, achieve their goals, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just need to make that leap within ourselves so everything else can happen uh, externally right so mindset i'm going to just quickly ask you a question about that because i just want you to share your thoughts on how you know your mindset can really impact your success as an entrepreneur what do you think about that yeah, that's that's absolutely true not only as an entrepreneur uh, in everything in life relationships um, um whatever you are doing your mindset should be the right it should be on the, on the right track and one of the things about it is, and I went through this as well, is, is that you need to be very careful with who you hang out with, right? With uh, who, who, who you surround yourself with because uh, sooner or later, if you hang out with people who 
are nowhere near to the level of success that you want to accomplish, you will end up at their level stuck. And sooner or later, you are going to start talking like them, acting like them, and thinking like them. Yeah. That is going to be basically the, the in the outcome, is going to be basically living a life like they live it, right? Uh, and as, a, uh, as an entrepreneur or as a person who truly believes in making, in, in creating great things in life, right, you need to be very careful with who you actually surround yourself with. You need to surround yourself with those people who, who are at the level, who have what you want in life, and, and just be a sponge of, of knowledge and just read those books and, and just uh, hang out with those people, get surrounded by the energy that they create. And sooner or later, you're going to start talking and you're going to start uh, thinking and acting like them, right? Yeah. And then while in the process, you actually start thinking on your own, right? You have starting your own original thoughts, right? And, and, and because you have enough self-confidence and strength to basically believe, hey, uh, uh, and listen to yourself, right? Listen to yourself uh, and 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 just create things based on what comes from within, yeah. uh, because you have enough confidence in your own power. Yes. So blogging. Why should people have a blog if they're in business? What's the importance of that? Well, that's another great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be honest, the, in 2015, it's not a a matter of if it is an uh, um if it's just an option. It's not just an option, it's a must. If you are in business, having a blog is a must. And there's a few reasons why. You know, I'm gonna just mention a few reasons um, uh, because it will give you, you know, a, a better idea of how, uh, of the, on the big picture, right? Yeah. A blog is not just a place where, where uh, you write your own thoughts, use it as a journal or things like, things like that. A blog is an actual asset. Assets, by definition, they add money. They they uh, they basically give you positive cash flow, right? They they add uh, money in your bank account. They, they but a liability is the opposite, right? Is is basically it takes money out of your pockets. If I if I give you the the um, the example of let's say real estate, if most people think that when they buy a house, right, to live in that house, that it is an asset. And that's very far from the truth. If you are living in that house, that that mortgage, right, is taking money out of your pocket. It's not an asset. It's a liability. Yeah. Okay. If you if you buy the house to rent it, and then that rent give you positive monthly monthly positive cash flow, right, then it becomes an asset, right? So a blog is an actual asset. And like in real estate, you can actually create a blog yeah. and then sell it later on for tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions, mm -hmm. right? And, and, or you can actually buy an actual blog very cheap that is already created, right? And then fix, uh, fix it, right? Flip it like you do with, with a house and then resell it for profit. Yeah. A, a blog is an asset. And when it comes to your business, it will help you build your brand, okay, whether it's your personal brand or your business brand, it will help you create authority, build authority, build credibility, build trust within your niche, within your, within your field, right? It will allow you to basically, uh, it's kind of an employee who is working for you 24 hours, seven days a week, okay? Once that blog is set up the smart way, Okay, and I say the smart way because a lot of people do it the dumb way. <laughs> okay, I, I have done it the dumb way before. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. which allow me to to acquire some skills that allow me to to share this right now with you. So don't don't be afraid to make mistakes, right? In, in the process of learning uh, all this stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, a, a basically what I love about it is that it really allows you once you set up the right way. Right, it really allows you to be found, okay, by your audience. And let, let me explain. When people, let's say that you are searching on, uh, on the topic of uh, how can I create a business in the photography field, right? How can I create, build a profitable photography business, right? Let's say you, where do you go to search for it? You go to Google, right? Oh. That's what most people do. They go to Google to, to research about it and learn a little bit more about it. By having a blog, it puts you on the map, and you have the chance to be on the front page of Google, 
right? If you do things right. So not only uh, helps you brand yourself, build credibility with your audience, build trust, even if you're just getting started, okay, and build authority, but also it puts you on the map. People, before they actually uh, decide to do business with you, they decide to buy your products, your services, your coaching programs, whatever that is, they want to learn more about you and what's in it for them, okay? So what they're gonna do, they're gonna find your blog, they're gonna start learning from your blog, they might subscribe to your blog to get more information from you, right? Whatever you are offering in there, and then they might become customers. But first, they need to get warmed up, right? You need to build that relationship with them. That's something else, right? But, but um, a blog really, uh, it's, it's an asset that will increase the income of your business if done the right way. It's not a if, it uh, may, may, may happen or may not happen. It, it's more about it will happen if done the right way, okay? Yeah. So that's, that's why every single person who is in business, whether it is a professional or somebody who actually uh, uh, wants to, to um, turn their passion into profits or take their ideas out there and see if people really will like them, and, and build a business around it, or if you already have a, a, a business, you can use a blog to really just skyrocket your profits, build an audience, build that brand, build that credibility right in your niche, and it's, it's extremely powerful. I've seen it so many times, and I have seen it on my own businesses. Amazing, amazing content, Vicky. You have, so, <laughs> you, have, you have a wealth of knowledge on this subject, and I love it. So, as you know, there's lots of uh, platforms like uh, Blogger, Tumblr, WordPress.com, and I find, especially with mumpreneurs, mums are starting out in business, they're lost. They don't know what platform to use because it's, you know they're all over the place. Some are free. They don't know about hosting. They don't know about all those subjects. So what? should they go for first should i give should they go for a free blog like wordpress.com and then translate that over to a self-hosted blog or should they start with a self-hosted blog first that, that's a great question um and and actually i was talking with somebody the other day about it because they asked me that the, the exact same question the answer to that is very simple i never ever recommend free blogs and free blogs by free blogs i mean blogger tumblr wordpress.com and a bunch of other stuff, okay? And there's a few reasons for that. I, I, I recommend a self-hosted blog with WordPress.org, but I don't recommend you to go to WordPress.org and just try to do it yourself and try to build it from scratch, okay? There's easier ways and fastest ways to make that happen. Hosted blogs uh, like uh, Blogger, Tumblr, WordPress.com, the reason why I don't recommend them first and even more importantly is because you don't you don't own it completely, yeah. okay? You don't own it completely. And if you are serious about business and creating an, an income from home, right, you cannot afford to go for a free blog, okay? And getting a self-hosted blog is not that expensive. I mean, you can do it, if you do it, uh, for example, I actually give an offer to my audience where they can get it for one cent the first month, right? Yeah. And then it's about $7 per month. So it's not that expensive at all, mm -hmm. right? but it will allow you to have full control of it. Now, uh, that's the, the, the main, the, the, the first uh, reason why you shouldn't get a free blog is because you don't have control of it. You cannot customize it the way that you want to uh, because you don't have control of it. Uh, Blogger or Tumblr or WordPress.com, they reserve the right to actually just shut down your, your blog if, if they think that you uh, violated any of their policies or rules, right? Mm -hmm. Which uh, if you are serious about business, you don't want to put yourself in that position, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the other uh, reason, like I said, it was customization. You cannot customize it the way that you truly want. You cannot brand yourself because who is branded is the actual platform. Blogger, Tumblr, they are the ones who are branded right there, mm -hmm. okay? So um, you cannot brand yourself. Um, you can put a lot of content in there if you wanted to, right? But you don't own it. Okay, who own it is are them. Okay, so as an entrepreneur, one of the basic rules is you need to own your stuff. Okay, you need to have control of your own stuff. All right, so um, because it's your asset, you cannot you cannot be building somebody else's asset. For that, you just become an employee and, and work for somebody else. Okay, so um, another reason is you cannot sell your own products and services to them. Okay. 
um, uh, because it, I think it's one of the, the rules that they have. You cannot really um, um, create a funnel where you basically just sell stuff in there, right? Uh, which is another thing. You want to make money from your own blog, right? You want to create a, a full-time income from home. Um, and a free blog doesn't allow you to do that. Those are some of the reasons, right? And I think they are extremely, extremely important. A self-hosted blog, you have, it's the opposite. You have full control of it. You can customize it the way you want to, okay? How many times you want to. You can sell stuff uh, from there as well if you want to. There's no limitation. That's, that's the powerful thing. When I feel limited, I don't like it. Uh, I cannot work on a business. I cannot grow a business if I'm limited, right? Yeah. Um, if I'm um, depending on a platform that uh, has most of the control, right? So those are just a few ones. There's plenty more, you know, but um, just for the purposes of this, I think those are uh, good enough reasons for deciding whether you go for a self-hosted blog, right, or, or, or free blog. Okay, so imagine that you have a self-hosted blog. Can you use WordPress, Tumblr, or Blogger to syndicate your content? I have never done it before. It depends. I, I believe there's there's uh, policies from from each plat free platform that um, will tell you yes, you can actually uh, syndicate it or not. It depends on each platform. I'm not really sure. I believe that the reason why I don't depend on those platforms as well is because um, on the fact that um, I'm, I want to build an asset and I cannot build an asset uh, through those platforms, yeah. you know, um, and that's important enough for me to just uh, ignore it completely. Yeah. Um, as businesses, those, those companies as businesses, they're amazing. I mean, the way that they started, the way that they um, uh, keep building their business, but as a person that is going to leverage, try to leverage those platforms, it's not a good idea. Okay. Well, I'm not good with limits either, so I completely agree with you. And um, I think starting off, you might as well start off as you mean to go on. So. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You don't, you don't want to say, hey, I'm going to just start with the free platform and then try to migrate all that content to uh, a self-hosted blog later on. So how important do you think it is to have some kind of strategy behind your blogging? That's uh, something that I was planning to talk about. Uh, so I'm glad that you actually asked about it. Yeah, yeah. One of the key components to really create a, a successful career with your blog, right? Uh, if, uh, build a, a, a profitable business with your blog is that you need to have a very specific blog strategy, right? Uh, and a series of action steps that, um, that allow you to get to where you want to get, right? And, it's, it's, and, and the problem is that most people don't, don't do it, maybe because they don't know, right? They think that uh, most people think that uh, once you just have your blog out there, uh, they just start writing blog posts and then what happens is that they put all this time, all this effort, and then they next thing they know is that, hey, I'm not getting, uh, uh, nobody's reading my post, nobody's making comments, nobody's sharing it. It's like nobody cares, right? Yeah. And, and the fact of the matter is, how do you want them to care when you don't even have an audience? Okay? This is uh, 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 one of the things that I want to share with you guys is, is that first, focus on having an audience. Have the blog set up the smart way, okay? There's uh, a com uh, some components that need to be in place before you launch your blog. And one of the most important parts of it is you need to focus on, on just a few things, okay? And there's so many options out there, right, to focus on. So many things that you can waste your time in, like social media, for example. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about it <laughs> in a second. But, um, but um, one of the main things that you need to focus on first is having that strategy in place, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be clear, okay? Yeah. And that's, what, that's one of the things that I do with my clients. I, I help them uh, uh, create a, a smart blog strategy, okay? and um, um, uh, to help them monetize from the start, okay? So um, one of the things that many of my peers in this niche are going to tell you is that blogging and making money with, with a blog takes a lot of time. 
And part of it is true, right? Yeah. Because it depends on your strategy. Okay, but I have I have personally experienced uh, launching a blog and making money on the first week. Okay, and and um, just to give you an example, there was a um, I'm, the, before blog launch insider, which is my my new blogging company. I had I created a blog just to test an idea that I had, and this idea was what if I can just create one blog post, right? Yeah. And and um with a very simple strategy and make money from one from that blog post and just focus on driving traffic to that blog post and not focus on content creation whatsoever okay mm -hmm. and um, and that blog post generated me two thousand three hundred and eighty three dollars in the first seven days really yeah and it is it depends all depends on the strategy and the intention okay it's it's not something that just happens you know you just write a blog post and it just happen people start coming in it just doesn't happen it, the strategy needs to be in place it needs to be a very simple strategy okay so um uh, I like to keep things simple in the beginning and then uh, um, I start uh, getting a little bit more um, uh, sophisticated or complicated if you will right uh, with uh, the steps and, and the strategy, adding other stuff uh, in, into into the, the mix. In the beginning, the, the important thing is to keep things very simple, having a very clear strategy and what you want to get from it, right? right. Basically, there are, uh, there are a few things that you should focus on. Obviously, having that strategy in place, one, right? Uh, second, uh, you need to focus on um, optimize on um, basically testing and optimizing your blog before you start writing blog posts like a crazy person right and just putting all this time every single day to write blog posts uh, I don't even recommend you to write blog posts every day okay so okay. so um, it's a waste of time um, what I mean is is um, is um, based on the strategy on the blog strategy we are going to basically uh, set up that blog okay so we can convert those visitors into subscribers and convert those subscribers into uh, paying customers mm -hmm. and or maybe high paid clients right okay. and even if you don't have your own product uh, is there's it's not hard to actually create something very simple that you can monetize from and you don't even have to have your own product you can actually um, promote or, or recommend all the products that are relevant to your audience and the niche that you are in, right? right. Um, the, 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 the next thing is that you need, the second thing was optimizing, trying to optimizing, optimize that blog for better conversion, okay? Uh, so if 100 people come to your site today, uh, to your blog today, and it's optimized, let's say 30 people subscribe to your blog, that's a 30%. Right? Yeah. Opt-in conversion rate, right? Yeah. Thirty percent. So the, from those thirty people, how many people actually become a customer? Maybe one, maybe two. Based on those numbers, you know what your conversions are. So you want to get your 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 conversions higher and higher, okay? Before you start actually uh, uh, writing blog posts uh, like a mad person, <laughs> you know, because that's the most that's way more important, okay? Uh, if you don't have a, your blog optimized, and I teach this, I, I share this with my clients, is that um, you, uh, it doesn't matter how many people, how much traffic you send to the, there, nobody is going to care, okay? Nobody is going to comment, nobody is going to share, nobody, it, it's, there is, there's no reason to do that. It's a lot of time wasted that um, a lot of people uh, basically do these days they they just uh, don't have a strategy in place that they can follow right yeah. um, and that's one of the things that I actually share now uh, the other thing is very important extremely important which is this is key to your success uh, when it comes to blogging is to instead of focusing on, on writing blog posts and content creation and all that stuff mm -hmm. you should focus on building relationships with influencers in your niche Wow. Influencers meaning other blogs that are authority blogs, blogs that have a lot of audience, a, a lot of uh, subscribers, right? People who are the top uh, 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 blogs in your niche. The reason why you want to build relationship with them is because 
you can get access to their audience. And their audience is that kind of people that you want to have as subscribers and as customers, right? Because it's in the same niche. Right. So if you don't folk, if you don't uh, uh, take time to build relationship with them, right? Uh, is it can be because you think they are your competitors, okay? And I want to say something about about this. When it comes to blogging, right? Competitors are a great thing. Mm -hmm. The more you have in your niche, the better, because the more outlets, the more uh, uh, opportunities you're gonna have to access their audiences. One of the ways that you can access their audience is by writing a guest post in their blog. Right, and and um, um, this is something that I have done with Blood Lunch Insider, okay. And I'm gonna tell you just in a second what have been the results in the first 21 days, okay. Um, actually, please just remind me, remind me of that because I can forget. <laughs> <laughs> Guest posting, not writing blog posts in your blog doesn't mean that you are you don't have to write blog posts. You can write blog posts about your specific topic in the niche. That, that you are in, right? Uh, something that is relevant to the the authority blog audience, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, let's say, this blog that has 3,000, 300,000 subscribers, for example. And once they hit publish, right? You usually have like a bio section that you were the guest, the the guest blogger, right? That the one who wrote that post. A lot of people from there are going to your site. They are going to be going to your site, they're going to click on that bio, right, and they're going to your site, they might subscribe to your site, and by association, they already trust you, okay, because you already uh, gave a value up front for free, and you did it on an authority blog, so by association, they trust you already, so it just cut the, the, that curve of trying to build credibility, trying to build authority, and trying to build trust, right, yeah. uh, within your own blog. So when you do that, you leverage a lot, okay? Yes. Um, another thing is that your competitors, those other authority blogs, they will become your joint venture partners in the future, okay? Uh, maybe you are ready to promote a product that is relevant to their audience, and they will promote it for a cut on, on commission, right, uh, of the commission. And you can make way more money that way as well. Those uh, also those uh, authority blogs uh, can become mentors for you. They can become um, uh, your mastermind buddies. So there's a lot of benefits that you can get from building relationships with influencers in your niche. Okay, so that's another component that is very important to focus on in the beginning. Okay, okay. and the other the other one is driving traffic, but targeted traffic, right? And it can be done just like uh, I just told you, guest, uh, guest blogging, right, uh, in other authority blogs. And also can be done um, by a paid traffic. This is one of my favorites because I use it myself. I haven't used it yet on Blog Launch Insider, but um, I use it for many, for many clients. Uh, I use Facebook advertising to drive traffic and, and to get uh, data right away and, and know what is working, what is not working, right? And optimizing to get better conversions. And then also sales and, and subscribers and all that goes, is one of my favorite ways to do it because I can do it very fast. I can get instant results, whether they are negative or positive. And I, I, it gives me time to actually just tweak a few things and get it better and make it better. Brilliant. So with the approaching the influencers in your niche would you say you know you just approach them find them by the emails definitely uh the best way is via email right um and it's the approach is not about what you want it cannot be about what you want it, it has to be about what's in it for them what is the benefit that they get right what do you what can you do to improve their blog or maybe you found some kind of uh, problem in their blog and you just uh, maybe a broken link maybe a link is not working and uh, when you give to them and you serve them right you are building relationships you are not just in there to say hey uh, uh, can you just go to my blog post um, and I think your audience will just uh, benefit from it I think uh, and I think you're gonna like it can you just go and, and promote it to whatever? It's not going to work, okay? Most of these people are very laser focused, 
and they won't waste time when people approach them that way, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's, there are different approaches. Actually, I'm, I'm creating a, a course where I actually share how you can, with scripts and everything, how you can actually approach influencers, how you can build relationships with them, and how you can get them to say yes, right, mm -hmm. to what you, what you want, right? Uh, but, but the basic foundation of it is you cannot approach them about what you want from them. You need to approach them uh, uh, and, and show them the benefits, right? Or you, you, can do it, you can do it with a series of steps. You can help them with something. Maybe they have a guide, right, that they have, and you think that that guide, the ultimate guide to blogging, right, for example, just to give you an example, and you read that guide and you thought it was wonderful, so you, you send me a message, right? You say, hey, I really love uh, uh, your guide, but I think there's a, a few parts in here that are, uh, are not in there that, that could be uh, very valuable uh, in your guide. Uh, could, could I actually share with you uh, this content and maybe you want to add it there, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and you are not asking for anything in, re in return. You are giving to them. It's about building relationships, right? Yeah. The, the, the important part is to put yourself on the in the radar, okay, on the radar, they need to notice you, okay? Yeah. And if you approach them the way that most people approach them, it's not going to happen. You are not going to get noticed at all. Yeah, that's a total mind shift because a lot of marketers, a lot of people think, you know, what can I get from them, you know, rather than what can I give, which is a complete, it's the way entrepreneurs work, really. Exactly. It's not just, you know, something that I say often to people is, don't be just a marketer, right, mm -hmm. or an affiliate marketer. Be an entrepreneur. Think like an entrepreneur, okay? It, there's a huge difference, right? Mar when you are a marketer, you, you usually are on, on marketing mode, like, like you know, here is this, uh, I want this, you know? I, I, it's like you already have a transaction in, in mind that benefits you, yeah. right? It cannot be that way. You know, I get... I'm not. I'm not even joking. I get dozens of of messages on Facebook every single day from people pitching me. They I never talked with them at all before, and they send me a message with a link pitching me about their business. You cannot, you know, you cannot get an influencer to answer you uh, uh, the way that you want when you do it that way. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, it just doesn't happen. Very true, very true. Thank you for sharing that, Ricky. I mean, that is a, a completely different way. And I don't, I think anyone listening, all the moms listening to this information right now, it's probably blowing their mind because, you know, you read these guys and you hear about all this information about blogging. It's the same rehashed information. But what you're bringing here is really fresh and it's really new and it's just a completely different way of thinking. So thank you so much for this. You're, you're very welcome. One thing that I want to say about it is, um, as a mom or as a person who is an asp aspiring entrepreneur, yeah. um, uh, if you want to increase your income, you need to think this way. That the, the mo if you want to increase your income, look for a way to serve more people, right? Your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them, yeah. okay? Not about how many people you pitch and how much you sell, okay? So it's a, it's a complete different mindset. If you want to increase your income, you know, it's about how many people you serve and how well you serve them. I love that. It's so true. <laughs> and for a lot of people <laughs> in business, um, finding ways to leverage their time because, you know, they've got to do the school run. They've got, a, they've got pockets of time, but they need, they need to be really productive. So how do you think blogging can be used for time leverage in their businesses? Uh, great, great question. Um, it, go, it all comes back to the strategy before launching the blog, okay? Um, I think a lot of the, the great things happen before you launch the blog. People think it's after you launch the blog, but it's actually before. And um, uh, if you want to leverage time, right, to have more time freedom because you need to take care of the kids because you want to do things that you love and not just focus on blogging all the time, right, you need to have a strategy that allows you to make that happen, okay? So that's, like I said before, that's what I actually, uh, uh, it's one of the things that I help my clients with is I, I help them build a strategy based on the kind of lifestyle that they want to create and the kind of 
uh, uh, income that they want to bring into their business. Um, and uh, it all depends on the strategy. If, if you want um, a, a blogging strategy can be blogging every single day, right? But if it's not aligned with the kind of lifestyle that you want, then that strategy is not going to work for you nor for your business. It needs to be, it, each person has a different kind of strategy, okay? There's some foundational components, right, that needs to be in place, but the strategy is the foundation that allows you to leverage your time, okay, to create more time freedom while you increase your income. I'm all about that. I love leverage. I love all of that. I love to have time freedom and obviously financial freedom. And the strategy and, uh, of your business and, and, uh, is, the, is what is going to allow you. It's, it's the roadmap, right? It's the blueprint yeah. that's going to allow you to, to leverage your time, okay? Basically, honestly, that's it. it, it and like I said, it happens before you launch your book. Okay. So do you think it's really possible to carve out a niche from your passions? Because as you know, there are a lot of people that have these passions and they just want to build a business and make money from what they love. So is it really possible to go out there and say, okay, I love, for instance, fashion. So I want to start a blog and I'm going to make money from this. How do you go about it? Is it really possible? Can it happen? Um, it is possible depending on one factor. Um, when it comes to blogging, I always recommend that, let's say you are, uh, that the niche that you are, whatever it is that you are passionate about, you need to make sure that you have a wide audience, okay? Mm -hmm. Because uh, blogging is a mainstream, main, mainstream medium, okay? It's not about little things. It's about, it's a mainstream medium. It's something that can become, it, it can become very big. But you need, in order to build a great business, six-figure income business, seven-figure income business uh, with a blog, make sure that the niche that you get into is pretty big. For example, let's put um, fashion, right? Yeah. Fashion is huge, right? But there are so many subdivisions of, pa of, of fashion that um, you might be very interested in, right? But maybe what you are passionate, uh, passionate about it about is... Um, maybe design or maybe just taking pictures, right? Uh, or, or whatever else is in the fashion industry, right? There's so many things and subdivisions in the fashion industry, right? That what is the niche within that big uh, um, marketplace, right? That big niche, what is the niche that you want to focus on, right? First, and uh, just make sure that it has a lot of um, uh, demand, right? That a lot of people search for it online. That a lot of people are talking about it online. That there's other influential blogs about it online, right? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and when you when you see that your passion is has a lot of potential because of that, then I believe it's a great way. It's a, it's a great way to decide. Hey, this this can make great income, right? Yeah. And while uh, creating the strategy of the blog, we determine how we are going to monetize that passion, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what is it that we are going to share with people, right? How we are going to attract those. Not all your all passions can be monetized in a big way, right? Yeah. And just make sure that your niche is not is something that people are talking about. It's people that people are searching about it, right? Uh, if nobody's searching about it, it's very hard to uh, basically groundbreak, right? Doing a, a, a groundbreaking of that niche yourself, you know, as a solopreneur uh, and just create a new niche, if you will, right? Within that industry. It, it, it's very important that that a lot of people are searching for it uh, so you can get great traction and drive a lot of traffic and, and build a, a great audience that allows you to make uh, a full-time income from home. Yeah. And what do you think your main focus should be whilst building your blog? What's that one thing that you should focus on more than anything else? That one thing more than anything else. See, it's, it's very difficult to answer just one thing because I think it's a combination of things Yeah. and that become, again, your strategy, right? <laughs> it, it's, uh, it, I would say building relationship with influencers in your niche uh -huh. and and serving them and getting access to their audience and having that blog optimized for better conversions right i teach all that and basically uh, having a strategy in place that 
have all that all those components in place. I, I think the strategy should be the main focus. And then when it comes to building the blog, building the list is extremely important. Your email list. Yeah. Okay. Any person in business must build their email list. If you are not doing that, you are going to regret it. Okay. And if you ask any extremely successful online entrepreneur, what was the one thing that they regret when they got started is that they're going to say to you, they're going to tell you that it was not building their list from the start. Okay. And because your list is your biggest asset in your business. These are the people who are going to be responsible for over 50% of your income. Wow. Because they are repeated, they they will become repeat repeat customers, right? Mm -hmm. Just to give you an idea, standard in the industry is that every subscriber that you have has a value of a dollar per month, okay? Mm -hmm. And that is just the standard, right? It's, it's just the average standard of 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 uh, every given industry across building a list, right, and online marketing. Yeah. But it can it, the value of that subscriber can be more. Okay, it depends on, on on when you compare it with the, the lifestyle lifetime lifetime customer value. Okay, it's uh, how many customers you have, how many uh, how much each customer in average have spent right uh, with you, and um, you can compare that with the amount of customers uh, of subscribers that you have, right? And you can see what is the value of your uh, subscribers, right, or your email list versus the value of your customer. Right? right list. So it is very very important that uh, you focus on building your list from the start. That I would say that's number one priority. Okay, is building your list. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Uh, Ricky goes into more depth on part two of this brilliant interview. So stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe now for updates that automatically come to you when the next episode airs. So speak to you soon.